So we have visited pro builders, we've been to workshops, but today we're getting to the heart of the show. We are talking to a shed builder. Finally! So of course it's not just any shed builder, it's Jimbo from the Bike Shed. Morning mate, how's my hair? It's good man, good. it's good. Right, it's fantastic. good to see you. It's good to see you too, yeah. We've been trying to get a video on this for so long now. I mean, you had it at the show last year. This is kind of a road to the show video, a staff bike video, a show bike video. All, all of the one. above. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Tell us about the bike, Jimbo. Where do you want to start? What did you start with? Well, hang on, let's go back to the beginning. Jimbo at the bike shed, how long have you been here? Six. Six years? Almost maybe? as long as me. Yeah, almost, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you first came here, you had a Rigid XS 650, didn't you? It, it wasn't a hardtail then, it was a softtail, but then right. I moved onto the hardtail, which was the biggest mistake I've ever had. <laughs> and was that your first build? Uh, no, I did a CB404 before that. Mm -hmm. um, but then obviously the XS was the proper build with the... And so this is Jimbo build number three? So this actually, yeah, this is number three. What happened to the 650? So this essentially is the swap for the 650. So a guy from Portsmouth came down and said to me, do you fancy a swap? I've got an XR200R, which I know you'd love, and this. It wasn't in this state, it was sort of a weird sort of flat tracker thing. I don't know if you ever saw it, I rode it here, it was yes. ridiculous. It was yeah. absolutely ridiculous. They'd sort of chopped off the rear of the bike, so there was nothing from sort of here back. There was nothing, there was just like a plate put in here and this had completely gone. Um, but before they started chopping with it, it was a Virago. Yeah, yeah. And because Viragos, there was loads of, the sh they were a really popular base bike for a build. I remember the old, the Hagerman one with the Benelli tank, mm -hmm. that was one of the originals. And then yeah. Classified did some beautiful things with Virago. And I just love the way the engine just hangs. It's all about the engine, isn't it, on the Virago? Yep, it absolutely, just yeah. It sits yeah. there. And this is the, the TR1, which so is- this, Yeah, this is the TR1. So essentially you've got the 750, you got the 920, and this is the 1000, and then it goes up to an 1100, but all of those, apart from the 1000, are the shaft drives. I think actually there's a 920 with a chain, but it's not, it's not the TR1. And the TR1 is the one that you always talk about, isn't it? Yeah, it's the one that's getting rarer and rarer because of the chain drive and stuff like that, because obviously you can do a lot more with the rear wheel in mm. regards to sort of making it larger. There were some beautiful Viragos and TR1 builds at the show. There was um, the Earth Motorcycles one. Do you remember that beautiful flowing bike? And there was a few on Shed Row. Yeah. So it's, it's a really popular donor. And man, I love what you've done with it. I would talk us through it. You, so you had a nasty trackered version of a TR1 and you wanted to make it into this cafe racer. So where, what did you start with? Did you start? So essentially, I, I didn't, I didn't want to keep, what I wanted to do was bring it back to how it should look essentially. I wanted to make sure that the frame flowed all the way through to the bottom. I wanted to make sure that there was no weird flat trackery sort of style. There was a seat that went all the way up here. It was just absolutely ridiculous. I wanted to lower the stance, make it more of a cafe racer build and do something a little bit different. Mm. Obviously, so I, The tank's from a Ducati Scrambler, yeah? So actually the tank is from, I don't know if you remember Callum's De Bollocks build. Yes. He, he did- um, The poster bike. Yeah, the poster bike. Mm. But he, this, is the, this is the tank off that. Right. So he, I think he used a CB750, anyway, well, I don't know what he used. I think he used the tank off a of Honda. Um, and I went to the workshop and I said, dude, is, do you want this? Because he'd already done all the leading on the side. So I said, look, this, is, this might work, it might not work. Um, he sold it to me, I took it back, I fitted it on, and it works absolutely perfectly. Now, it's a lovely fit. I saw, I saw somebody else do this on Instagram. There's a guy called Mitch. Um, he'd already done it, but... You're in this whole underworld of Virago meddlers, aren't you? You, um, yeah, you have to be. <laughs> you've, you've, you've got to be. And, the, I mean, what did you build on it? So you did the subframe. So there's two, two subframes that I did. The first one didn't work. The second one... Didn't work how? Um, it didn't work because I didn't word it very well. So I, I went back and redid it. Okay, Basically. cool. Sort of trial and error. Yeah, trial and error. Shed yeah. build, that's what it's about. I mean, what tools yeah. have you got in your, in your shed, your workshop? I mean, I don't have a lot. I mean, I've got maybe a little lathe. Yeah. I've got horizontal and vertical band saws. Yeah. And you Actually, weld. you know what? I just had one big hammer. And that's, <laughs> and that's how this turned out. Right. Oh, man. And what are the wheels from? Let's, let's go through the other bits that aren't native Virago. Okay, so <clears throat> the things that aren't Virago, I mean, every, everything on the bike, apart from the, 
the engine and the frame, everything else is off something else. Mm -hmm. So essentially the wheels are off a Triumph Daytona 675R. Mm -hmm. um, the tank is obviously a scrambler tank. The forks? Forks are off a CBR, no. The forks are off a CB1000RR. Right. Um, so are the brakes, so are the, is the triple tree. This isn't standard, is it, this clutch cover? So, the clutch cover and the air filter are made by a guy in Italy called Andrea, and he runs a company called 61 Mechanica in Italy. Now, he does a lot of CNC stuff, so both the clutch cover and the filter were made by him. Mm -hmm. I love this finish on the top of the engine casing. Yeah, so the engine casing, the triple trees, that is VHT Wrinkle Plus. So essentially, it's just three light coats. Mm. And, and you, did, you did that at home? So I did that all at home. Everything is, is done at home. The only thing that's not done at home is the powder coated frame, that's it. The frame and the swing arm um, are sent away for powder coat. Everything else is painted by me in the garage. Is this the headlight you stole off Harry's e-bike? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, and now, okay, so this was your bike at the 2022 show. Mm -hmm. And tell everybody what you're building for the show in 2023. Um, exactly the same bike, in green. <laughs> so yeah, um, we've been back and forth on this for ages. So Jimbo has built a beautiful TR1 and now he's building another bike and he's building another TR1. Is it going to have high bars or is it going to be a cafe? So I can switch and do either. You're I, just I, building I, the same bike I know again. What, I know, I know, listen, I know what you want, <laughs> but I want the cafe racer style for the moment. But yeah. I, I, can, I can change the triple trees and put a higher and a higher. I can change the triple trees and put higher bars on it. What are you going to do differently? I mean, I've, I've seen the pictures. You keep coming in and asking me to render it in different colors in Photoshop and yeah. everything. Yeah. The swing arm, that's yeah. the big change, isn't it? Yeah. So the swing arm is from a 2012 Hyper Motard. Yeah. So is the rear Beautiful. wheel. So is the front wheel. The forks are off a CBR 1000RR again. Yeah. Uh, and I found another scrambler tank. And it's the same engine, so you're still pumping out. How many horsepower have you got in this that you're wrapping with all this beautiful suspension and brakes? Don't ask me that question. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me that question. I want to say 58 horsepower. I could be lying. I could be lying. I have no idea. And you, you, um, you did the exhaust, didn't you? I made the exhaust. Yeah, exhaust was kind of where I first became aware of you doing lots of meddling at home. You did the exhaust on your uh, Ducati, didn't you? I did. I did a pie cut version of the stock exhaust. Yeah, voided the warranty. Yeah, voided the warranty. <laughs> All of those things that you're not allowed to do. Sorry, DK. Um, and yeah, made a full pie cut exhaust for it. Um, so that's sort of what I really enjoy doing is yeah. the, the sort of fabrication side of things. That's and you really fabricated enjoy. a new uh, subframe for the new build? Subframe is me, exhaust is me, uh, mounting the tank is me, but that's a very simple, and of course, simple the, thing to do. Your new build, the shock on a single-sided Ducati swing arm is pretty much vertical, isn't it? Yeah, so the shock on the new one is, is literally horizontal. No, it's not. The, the shock on the new one is horizontal. Mm -hmm. So obviously I had to make a trellis frame to be able to fit the, the rocker so the yeah. rocker can move properly. Um, so, so a little it's, bit, it's a more in-depth build. There's a little it? bit of engineering yeah. that goes into it, yeah. but you've not got too you've much. got your landings from this one. You're taking it to the next level on the next TR1. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. how many TR1s are left for you to play with, or are you um, going to do something different next? Well, I just get another TR1. <laughs> Actually, trying to source this one was, was quite difficult. I saw this engine on the Virago site, and somebody was selling it in the Netherlands. I rang up the guy in the Netherlands, spoke to him at one. I was sitting in Arch Three. I was I, I phoned him at one o'clock and said, look, I'll have the engine. By Friday morning, nine o'clock, Dan, you called me and said, there's a crate in Arch 4. <laughs> I was like, what? I, I haven't ordered anything. Anyway, it came into work and it was the engine. the engine. Two days. From the Netherlands to here. I think you tried to palm that off as being a fridge to Vicky. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how legally it, what are you doing? I'm gonna just swing a leg. I mean, obviously we're very different proportions. I don't know what you're on about. A, I think. Sta a standard sized human is kind of slap bang between us, isn't I, it? Just so you know, I am a standard sized human being. <laughs> just so you know, I've just lost a couple of inches. Oh, it's tight. I'm gonna, we need to start it up. Yeah, yeah. We need to hear it go, hear those yeah. pipes. And then, um, yeah, I should probably take it for a test ride, I think. Cool, mate, away you go. <laughs> you look like Bowser. <laughs> Jimbo, mate, thank you so much. Let's get it outside and hear it go. Cool. All right, cue the Benny Hill music. You good, you good Dan? Okay, so uh, how long has it been since it fired? 
Uh, six months. Six it's, months. It's not fired in. Okay, cool. So nice it, could all, it could all go tits up. You got a lithium battery in there. There's a lithium battery in there. Cool. Let's have a test. Okay. One of those. Got lights. One of those. Fuel. One of those. More fuel. And one of these. Oh, it was close. It fancied it. That's not bad. Bollocks. Dan, have you got some footage of Jimbo riding this out of here from another time? <laughs> Hang on a minute. It's, no, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It does sound wonderful, Jimbo. Why don't you? Look at the smoke coming off of it. It'll be fine. It'll be Good fine. Work. Good work. Beautiful. Done. Thank you for watching. Do check out our other Road to the Show episodes and come and see us at the show in May and see Jimbo's other bike. It's going to be finished, right, Jimbo? No. <laughs> <laughs>